Sony Pictures Entertainment is reeling from what may be the biggest and most devastating computer hacking in Hollywood's history. Last week, employees logging into their computers were greeted with the following image on their screens, hacked by hashtag GOP over a picture of a sinister looking red skeleton. It was not the Republican Party that carried out the attack, we should note. GOP reportedly stands for Guardians of Peace, a previously unknown group now claiming credit for the hack. The hack shut down the company's entire computer system, and according to the LA Times, employees were reduced to using old-fashioned pen and paper to complete assignments, and, God forbid, taking calls on landline telephones. We even fired up our fax machine, one person told the paper. And days later, five of Sony's feature films leaked online, including four that have not yet been released in U.S. theaters. One of those was Annie, a star-studded remake of the much-loved musical, which doesn't come out for another two weeks. Think for a moment about how valuable that is, a holiday season family movie that no one has seen yet. Over the weekend, Sony started to put things back together, hiring a big Silicon Valley security firm to help get its systems back online and get to the bottom of what happened. The FBI also confirmed it's investigating the hack. But then yesterday morning, a reporter at Fusion got an email from an anonymous source with a link to thousands of internal Sony documents, including one spreadsheet containing the salaries of more than 6,000 Sony Pictures employees, including top executives, and another one lifting the, listing the names, birth dates, and social security numbers of over 3,000 employees, also including top execs. The question is, who's behind it all? Who are these so-called guardians of peace? Tech news site Recode reported that Sony is investigating links to North Korea, while a senior U.S. official told NBC News that North Korea is indeed among the possible suspects in the hack. Today, Wall Street Journal reported the malicious code used against Sony is nearly identical to the hacking tools used in a March 2013 attack against South Korea. That attack, which shut down South Korean broadcasters, banks, and ATMs, was traced back to an IP address in China thought to be operating on the North's behalf. And if North Korea has the capability, it may also have the motive. So, what can we do you for? The CIA would love it if you two could take him out. Take him out? Like for drinks? No, uh, take him out. You want us to kill the leader of North Korea? Yes. What? That is an unleaked Sony Pictures movie called The Interview, coming out on Christmas Day, starring James Franco as an inept uh, talk show host, and Seth Rogen as his producer, who were recruited by the CIA to assassinate North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. An absurd concept, sure, but to the North Koreans, not a laughing matter. After the first trailer came out in June, they released a statement decrying the movie as terrorism and a war action and vowing to carry out a strong and merciless countermeasures. When asked yesterday if his country was responsible for the hack on Sony, a spokesman for North Korea's mission to the UN responded, wait and see. Joining me now, Russell Brandom, reporter for The Verge. I, this story is bananas. It's the craziest thing I've ever covered. I mean, <clears throat> the whole thing, the whole taking the whole thing down, the fact that it might be North Korea as, as retaliation for the interview. I mean, how, how much do we know at this point? Let's start there. Well, we know that a lot of this is very, very different from what you would normally see in a hack of this kind. Like, the, the red skeleton, for instance, is not standard operating procedure. Generally, the biggest advantage hackers have is they can be in the system for months before anyone knows they're there. Right. So, so when we're talking about hack of this kind, I mean, presumably all these companies, right, have these enormously valuable files sitting on their system somewhere, right? The, 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 the file to a movie they're going to release or an album. And they have pretty firm security measures to keep those protected, I would imagine. One would hope. I mean, you never know. Right. So, so the, the fact that they, they advertise the hack is different than what you might anticipate if people were really just trying to get those files. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, they weren't selling the movie. They weren't, they were just putting it for free on the internet. All those social security numbers would be worth a lot of money on the open web, but they're not open if, right. I mean, they're not valuable if people know that their security, you know, their security has been hacked. It's, it's sort of only good if it's secret. So whoever it is, they don't seem to be interested in money. They don't seem to be trying to make a political point because they haven't said anything about why they're doing this. They really just want to make life difficult for people who work for Sony Pictures, which is really puzzling, kind of only makes sense if it's North Korea. And how, I mean, what's the backstory on the North Korean reaction to the interview? I mean, I remember there, it being a story for a few days that this movie's gonna come out, North Koreans were unhappy, but it seems like they're really more than just unhappy. Well, I mean, they're very unhappy about a lot of things, right? I mean, I <laughs> that's true. generally the North Korean reaction to sort of Western perceived insults from the West has been very 
heated, right? right? And I think that they look at cyber capabilities from com uh, countries like China, countries like Iran, and sort of it's a matter of national pride that they want to sort of keep that up. And I mean, as we saw in the attacks in South Korea last year, they have been able to do so. In some I, I did not know about the attacks in South Korea until I was reading in on this story. And they, I mean, it's r incredible what they were able to do, it appears, again, I don't think this definitively establishes IP address in China, um, what they were able to do in South Korea. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, well, the story of internet security is you can do a lot of damage with a small group of, uh, you know, well-funded and well-motivated people. I think, you know, even in North Korea's case, we don't know how well-funded they are, but I think you, it's always remarkable how much damage you can do with just sort of the little foothold in a system. So what is the kind of world going to look like as increasingly it is the case that every valuable thing is stored by these companies on computers, right? I mean, I, I had the thought today that forget North Korea who's doing this as, if, if they are in fact doing it as retaliation or whoever's doing it who doesn't seem to be driven by monetary goals, right? But, you know, Annie, three weeks before its release, is the equivalent in 21st century of like a diamond heist, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, it's this massively valuable thing that you can break in and get and it actually made me think it's amazing it doesn't happen more often. Yeah, I mean, I think the main takeaway for me is, it, you know, if we're trying to stop this, it is true that we're spending $4.3 billion a year, you know, the U.S. intelligence community, on cyber actions ostensibly to protect America from, you know, cyber attacks by foreign actors. Um, and when a hack like this happens, and you see this with Sony, you saw this with the New York Times when it was... Uh, attacked last year, they turn to private security firms, uh, and the FBI has been very helpful, but they have a fraction of the budget that an organization like the NSA has to throw at this, and a, a much harder task. Quickly, it, it, there is some reporting that there might be malware in the actual torrents that were seeded online. I would not be surprised. Interesting. Russell Brandom, thank you very much. President Obama has been keeping himself pretty busy lately, what with Guantanamo prisoner transfers, finding a new Secretary of Defense, and oh, that executive order immigration. That is not all. We'll tell you what you probably haven't heard next.